In this tutorial we're going to look at the effect of noise on inversion. This is illustrated in figure 5.22 in chapter 5 but we're going to use ResiPy here to show the same kind of effect. So I'm going to generate a forward model as before. Uh, in 2D I specify my electrode array. I've got 48 electrodes, 5 meter spacing. I generate these and then I mesh the region. So I'm going to create two anomalies as before with the rectangular tool an object on the left, an object on the right and then I'm going to mesh this and then specify 10 ohm meters for the object on the left 1000 ohm meters for the object on the right and then I go to forward model I'm going to use a dipole-dipole array, in this case with A set to 1, and I've chosen a small dipole spacing because this really enhances the, the effect. I'm going to generate a forward model with 5% noise added, so this is 332 dipole-dipole quadrupole measurements. There's my pseudo section, and then I can go to inversion setting. I change my offset error to zero. The true noise level is 5%, so I set B weight to 0.05. Before I do that, I'm just going to remove any bias in my mesh. So I'm going to make sure that I don't use the exactly the same mesh used to create the forward model. So I'm just going to select design mesh, triangulate the mesh, and now I have no. Um, none of the feature boundaries in this mesh. I can go to inversion, run inversion, and this, this starts through an initial misfit of uh, just under 14, and it has converged in two iterations. I switch off the sensitivity overlay, I'm going to change my color scale here, and I'm going to plot this on a scale of 1 to 3 because that's the true scale. I can compare that to my forward model. That's the true structure and then this is the conversion. So as before I've got a smooth model um, but it seems to seems to work well. The noise level seems seems appropriate. I'm going to go now to the inversion setting and I'm going to change my A weight and my B weight to 0.2. This means I'm telling the inversion that my data has a noise of 20% when in actual fact it has 5%. So this is the pessimistic approach where the user thinks that their data is not as good as it really is. I then go to inversion and I run invert. Now the initial misfit is much smaller and it's converged in one iteration and we'll see, we see here that we've got a much more smooth response. So what we've done is we've not extracted the full extent of the information in the data set. We've underfitted the model. The worst case scenario is when I when I think that the data is better than it really is. So if now if I set the B weight to 0.01, I think the error level is 1% rather than 5%. And now run inversion. The initial misfit is much higher and it's going to have to work much harder to be able to get convergence. And so for the true error level case, it converges in two iterations. But now it's having to work much, much more. And we'll see that the alpha, the smoothing parameter, the regularization parameter, is having to reduce to be able to fit the data. So it thinks that some of the fluctuations in the measurements which are due to noise, it thinks that that's actually true signal and it's trying to work to match 
the, the response of the model to the data and the consequence of this is that the final result will be noisy as we see here so the true structure looks like this but the final result is this and we may end up over interpreting some of this behavior some of this variation in here when in actual fact what it is is down to noise so it's becomes it's it illustrates how important it is to be able to specify the right noise level when we look at some field examples we'll show how we can use measurements of reciprocity to estimate the noise level and use that to um, to specify the to set the error level in the inversion